Welcome back, everyone. President Muhammad Buhari won the 2015 general elections riding on the change mantra. He's perceived as a man whose popularity in the north and in most parts of the country is regarded as a court following. The president promised so many things at the campaigns, but three issues were at the spine of the campaigns, fighting insecurity, fighting corruption, and reviving the economy. Tonight, we shall be examining some of these issues and the reasons why the president thinks he deserves a re-election. In 2014, and though uh, the 2015 campaigns, one man spoke loudly for the APC and President Buhari. He rose from being the party spokesperson to the government spokesperson. Alaji Lai Mohammed joins us on the program tonight. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for information for coming on the program tonight. Sure, thank you. You're sir. welcome. Let's begin with the conversation on uh, we are in the election mood and the preparations have started. The big question would be why do you think President Buhari deserved the second term? He deserves a second term for the simple reason that in the last three and a half years, he has leveraged his legendary integrity and acumen in managing resources, both human and material, to reinvent governance and impact positively on the lives of many Nigerians. He has also been responding positively to the three campaign promises he made. He has been fighting corruption, he has been tackling insecurity, and he has been revamping the economy. Today, under the Mamad Buhari, Nigerians can once again dream and hope because he has rebranded governance. He has put the country on the path of sustainable growth and development. He is rebuilding infrastructure. He is implementing what can be described as the most ambitious social investment program in the history of the nation. He is ensuring that a few fat cuts do not loot the national resources. At the same time, he is ensuring that Nigeria is self-sufficient in many areas, especially in food production. And above all, he has brought honor and respect back to the country, at the same time fighting all forms of insecurity in the country. If I allow the minister, because he's the custodian of information for this government, you will perhaps reel out all the achievements of this government in one uh, uh, breath. But let me begin with, uh, before we go into the nitty gritty of the performance of this government and what they have done and whether or not uh, Nigerians will vote for this uh, president again, there are some issues on which I would like you to uh, douse some of these, uh, uh, the debate over Perhaps the certificate of the president is uh, the requisite, um, legally or morally speaking, whether or not is fit to be president by his um, educational qualification. Do we have the president's certificate now? I think we have moved far beyond that. And I want to quote what Mr. Basanjo himself said in 2014, 2015, during this, you know, uh, saga of so-called you know, lack of a, a president's uh, certificate. He said it's an insult for a man who rose to the highest echelon, the Nigerian army, for a man who went to the war college in the US, for a man who went through staff college to anybody to start asking whether he has a school certificate or not. And I think I want to rest it there. But, I mean, is, is it more, because a, a lot of people had said, look, for him, you do not even need to pass the uh, first school living certificate uh, exam, but you just need to have it. Sure. To have sure. Sure. The, the question is, sure. uh, uh, Honorable Minister, is the fact that would he not have silenced uh, critics and those who are making this an issue by just presenting it to the public? Sure, we don't want to be distracted on an issue that is it completely non-issue. 
Mr. President served the Nigerian army. Mr. President said over and over again, please go to the Nigerian army and then ask them to release my certificate. And like I say again, it's not a matter I want to waste anybody's precious time over. It's an insult for a man who has, you know, risen to the peak of his career in the army, has undergone so many courses, to start asking whether he has a scout or not. And this is a man who has, even before, during, and after the elections, has had reunions with his, you know, secondary school colleagues, which was widely covered by all the media. I think we should move on to some serious issues. If you're talking about fitness of office, I mean, the, the president did recognize at some point that he was seriously ill. How fit is he now? Sure, there's nobody who cannot be ill. Sir President was ill, he was open about his illness. Sir President has recovered. And as I speak today, I marvel at Mr. President's you know, stamina because I see what he does every day. He receives a minimum you know, of two to three delegations every day. He holds, you know, FEC meetings as long as he's in Nigeria, you know, every week. He consults and receives, you know, military reports, you know, so, you know security reports. He goes through his files. Every minister that wants to travel must get his approval. He lists up, you know, through everything. I don't think we have a fitter person that can run the office of president. And are you bothered? I mean, because I know that you are the chairman of the campaign council. That's what I understand. Is it true? I can be chairman of the campaign of council. The, of the media campaign uh, uh, no, council. I, well, I, as the minister of information and culture, of course, I have, I mean, I will have a big role to play, you know, in the campaign. But I am absolutely not perturbed. I feel very confident that Mr. President is going to win re-election, not because of anything, but because of his track record.